All right. So this is a Powercaster trailer caddy. And according to the manufacturer, this will move a 30,000 pound trailer. Today we're gonna find out. All right, so recently I bought a bunch of heavy duty equipment trailers, mainly uh, drop deck trailers. If you're not familiar with a drop deck trailer, really cool trailer where the entire deck uh, hydraulically lowers flat down to the ground. So if you have to move like a lathe or a milling machine, you just drag it flat, no tilts, nothing, super safe. Uh, really, really good machines. And on top of that, my buddy Mac bought a dump trailer and where we live and the setup at the shop, it's not easy to maneuver them around. So I saw this used uh, on a Facebook group for a couple hundred bucks and I picked it up. This is a Powercaster PC3. It's the largest model that this company makes and it is an AC powered uh, plug into the wall trailer dolly. So it has these two super heavy duty wheels in the front and then this reduced speed chain drive uh, to run them. Now there's a couple modifications we're gonna have to do to get it to work and some modifications that I wanna do to it to kind of make it more convenient to move around. So let's get into it and then uh, give it a test run. So the first thing uh, that I wanna work on on this, uh, just a convenience issue, is that the, these little wheels on the back, they're not made for actually rolling the trailer. When you have a trailer on the center, on the post, these wheels are gonna be up off the ground, but they, they suck. They're really small and they're super awkward. They're not easy to move this thing around. So uh, I've been thinking about ways to add an axle and add some larger like all-terrain tires to it. And I think I came up with a really elegant solution to do it really quickly. So unfortunately, I'm gonna have to mess up this cool hand done sort of like uh, pinstriping that's on this thing. But here's my thought. Uh, I've got this sort of mocked up. I've got two hand truck wheels on an axle. And my thought is if I were to have this axle sort of sitting down on the ground and I basically added a hook to the side frame here, what I could do is I could lift up the whole thing and then put the axle underneath it and it would hook on that. And now I could roll it around way easier, especially off road um, using these big wheels versus these tiny wheels. Now I can't attach these permanently to the power caster because you want these wheels to come up off the ground when you actually get it on the ball. So I'm gonna just make up some little brackets that'll essentially do exactly what those clamps are doing in a nicer, more elegant way, and then figure out a different axle, um, probably still use the threaded rod, but make it a little bit nicer so that I can use these all-terrain wheels, and this will make it e a lot easier to move around. In order to get the axle to stay on the bottom of this trailer caddy, I'm gonna make two little kind of hook brackets out of some 3 8 inch thick steel that I have laying around from another project. Before I get to doing that, I just took the wire wheel and ground off some of the paint, which came off pretty easily, and then I could go into my cardboard design after laying out some lines with a Sharpie. The cardboard method works awesome. It's tried and true. Basically just draw the part that you need, cut out the cardboard and trace it onto a piece of metal or wood, whatever that may be. In this case, I have these extra brackets. These are from the ramp project from a few years ago, and they've got half inch holes punched in them already. So chasing them out to five eighths is really easy over on the drill press. Now you're gonna wanna use a better clamping method than I've got here. People have plenty of accidents on the drill press, but for some reason I thought this was a good idea. Um, it was totally not, and it was leaning. Not a great way to drill a hole, but it got me the result I needed. Now I can just clamp this piece of metal to the table and then use my portable bandsaw to cut this plate. If you're not already using a portable metal cutting bandsaw for metal projects or even wood projects, you've gotta get yourself one. This is the 18 volt compact Milwaukee version. It's really great, super easy. And honestly, I find that I use it more than most of my other bandsaws just because it's so much less cumbersome and so, so fast. Once that is cut out, I can use the die grinder to smooth out all the edges and make sure that this fits over the 5 8 threaded rod, stuck it through the table so that I could transfer this over onto the next plate and make another bracket. While I'm making that other bracket, I wanna talk about this video sponsor and how I plan on powering the trailer caddy once I get it all worked out. It's 110 volt and I don't wanna use an extension cord, so I've got an Anchor Solix F2000 pure sine wave battery inverter right here. This is essentially just a large battery pack, but it's got all the technology that you need to power devices and use it while you're on the go. It's got a bunch of different ports, which I really like, USB-C, USB, it's got two cigarette ports like you'd have in a car, and then it's got an outlet that matches what you would use for an RV, and then four regular AC outlets. You can turn on each section individually if you wanna use it, 
And then when you go to charge it, you can use a solar charger or you can use a regular 110 or even a car socket to charge it in the car. It also has the ability to expand and put another battery on it and you can expand it with a cord, plug it right there and get even more power out of it. It's got this really nice kind of stow and go handle that makes it easy to roll around and it's easy to move. It is definitely really well built and it's got some nice weight to it. And here you can see me using it at the camper upstate. It's got this TT-30 RV port and super long lasting Life PO4 batteries that'll last 3000 charge cycles or the equivalent to 10 years of use. If you're interested in one of these, check out the discount code down in the description for Prime Day. They've got a great sale going and it's a really awesome product. Now with that bracket done, I can actually go ahead and weld these to the trailer caddy. Now, I didn't wanna to have to ruin the paint like this, but these are gonna make a huge difference when it comes to moving this thing around. After actually getting this project done and rolling this thing in and around my shop and upstate, having those extra wheels really made all the difference. Maybe this is an idea I should sell to Powercaster. So once I had it mocked up and just tacked on, I could go back and do the full welding. The position is good, it doesn't lift it up too much, but just enough that it keeps those little wheels off the ground and it's really just such a simple way to solve this problem. A little bit of welding here to get these things attached. I had to bevel them pretty good because it is pretty thick plate, but it was overall pretty easy. My only concern was making sure that I didn't melt any of the wires or do any damage to any of the stuff that was already there on the trailer caddy. The only thing I don't have is some matching paint to kind of clean it up, but here you go, you can see how it works. And in this case, I have pneumatic tires on there, but I actually went and switched them to solid rubber tires, so I wouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, so with the mobility of this thing a little bit solved, and basically the fab work that I have to do to the frame of this done, uh, we can talk about how I'm actually gonna hook this up to the trailer. So you'll notice there's just like a socket here on the end of the trailer caddy. And then you'll see this contraption. So this is from another trailer caddy that I have, uh, this thing. Uh, this is a single wheel trailer caddy for moving like smaller trailers. I think this will move like a, a 1500 pound trailer or something like that, maybe 3000 pound trailer. And basically what this does is this ball goes in there like that. Uh, and then you can hook up to your trailer with this ball. But what's special about this stem and the reason that I've got it, the reason that I've got it here instead of making my own sort of stem is because of the system that they've got with this threaded part. And I'll show you kind of how this works. Okay, so what's special about this is that it actually locks on to the female side of the trailer. It locks on to like basically the, the, the ball coupler. So the reason for that is like typically if this ball were to be all the way up and we would hook onto the trailer, it could move around in that sort of ball and socket. That's the point of the ball mount on a trailer is that it can actuate as the car is moving uh, around. What this does is you kind of put this up into the socket on the trailer and then you use these holes and a bar to tighten this down. And basically what that's gonna do is it's gonna cinch this plate up against the bottom of the receiver uh, on the trailer. And then once it's cinched up against the bottom of the receiver on the trailer, you can then take this whole apparatus uh, and it'll be super tight and basically be a rigid bar from the trailer. And then this needs to go into the trailer caddy so that the trailer caddy doesn't just immediately kind of walk out on itself and pop this ball out because there's just too much slop in the system. So the way this is gonna go into the, the trailer caddy that we're working on is on this little sleeve, but clearly it's not a great fit. We want this to be nice and tight. Uh, this piece, when it was brand new, would have come with some shims you could have used to kind of shim out to this. We're just gonna have to make our own. The other thing we're gonna have to adjust is the overall height of this ball is what I think is gonna be a little bit too high. So I'm sizing this off of the trailers that I have and that Mac has and the back of our trucks. So if I'm looking at this thing from a perspective of it mimicking the back of my truck, I either want it to basically be the back of my truck or a little bit lower. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that we have a lot of tongue weight because if there's not enough tongue weight trying to move this trailer around with the caddy, uh, this isn't gonna be heavy enough to keep the back end of that trailer from just launching this up into the air. So um, that's gonna be critical that this is actually shorter than taller. If anything, maybe make it an inch or so shorter uh, than what's on my truck. Now the way to get there is gonna be to make myself a shim uh, out of some tube and kind of rig this up to all fit. 
Now, in order to make the shim, I had a piece of material that was almost perfect. It was just too big to fit inside the sleeve on the trailer caddy and also just a little bit too big to fit tightly on the actual ball adapter that we're going to be using. So it's this piece of tube. And the way that I'm going to get there is I basically took a little piece, cut it off, and then I cut a little chunk out of it to try to shrink the tube. Now, it's a little heavy wall to try to do this, but in the end, it's going to work out. So basically, you can see there it almost fits. And by sort of persuading it closed a little bit over on the anvil, I get it closer. The problem is, as I'm making it closer to fitting inside that sleeve, I'm also making it too tight to fit on the adapter. So it's a combination of sort of grinding and hammering to sort of get it to even fit inside there. And in the end, I do want this to be a nice tight fit. Any additional slop in there is going to allow the power caster to sort of walk out and kind of wiggle. So in the end, I wound up deciding that it would just be faster to turn this down on the lathe. So I slid it on to the ball adapter and then put a couple tack welds on the bottom and went over to the lathe in the machine shop. Now this didn't center up great, but since I'm really just taking like a rough cutting pass, it's fine. And basically just took a couple passes to take a little bit of material off of the shim. Now, because it was kind of an interrupted cut, it didn't cut great. And I wound up going back and taking the grinder and just sort of smoothing everything out. And then once that's all done, I'm able to cut the tack welds and then pop that thing off. Now it is absolutely perfect. I'll probably add a little bit of grease just to make sure everything moves around nice. And it's really going to make the difference between this thing working well or potentially having like tons of action and slop in it where it can move around. One of the dangers of using a trailer caddy like this is that you've got a ball and socket and you really want to reduce the movement that you get from the ball and socket. Hence this whole threaded thing. Now, once I cut the welds and get everything kind of fitted up, I can check for the actual height and make a cut based on the measurements that I made to shorten the adapter that I got with the other trailer caddy. I know it probably seems like I cut a lot off there, but it's going to make this just the perfect height so that I get adequate tongue weight and I don't have to worry about the trailer kind of doing a wheelie on me and rolling away. Both me and Max trucks are about 20 to 21 inches and it winds up being perfectly exactly where I want. Now, the next thing I want to add is just sort of a little accessory. There's a bunch of little parts and pieces that come with this, and I don't want to have to worry about transporting them at the same time uh, separately. So I decided to take one of these little Apache kind of knockoff Pelican cases and more or less permanently mount it to the trailer caddy. These things are watertight, not like I'm going to leave this thing out in the rain, but they're a nice protected way to sort of keep parts and even keep the instruction manual close by so I don't have to worry about, you know, kind of running and looking for stuff. There's a nice kind of way to mount this. I basically just cut out a section of that little tube and so it would go around the round handle and then I use the piece I cut out to make sort of a little flag and I'm just welding it to the frame and then I'm going to go ahead and use some self-tapping screws to just screw right through the case and screw it to both of the pieces of sheet metal. This thing is not in interference with the motor in case I need to tighten the chain and it's going to be the perfect little companion to hold the other size ball and there's also a brake cable which I'm not going to be using in this video but eventually want to figure out how to use. It also gives a place for the tightening bar to sort of sit and stay out of the way. With that done, I can get this monster off the table, get the wheels on it, and I can go and move my trailer around and make sure this thing's working. It's looking good. So this is my drop deck trailer, and it's currently in a yard space that has no power. So being able to use the Anchor F2000 is going to be perfect here because otherwise this thing is a real pain to move. Me and Mac basically like muscled it into this corner and you can tell the ground is not great. But by tightening up that ball section and then basically kind of forcing this thing out of the mud, once I get it onto pretty solid ground, it rolls really, really well. One of the issues I had there was I had to make sure the ball was tight enough. But again, once I got this thing moving, I could have, you know, got a mile. It's pretty slow but it really, really is controlled and I never ever felt like this thing was dangerous or gonna roll away on me. I really like that I can now maneuver this trailer in ways that I wouldn't be able to do with my truck and I can even spin it around or if I need to bring it somewhere to service it. And now with the Anchor Solix F2000, I don't have to worry about having a super long extension cord because like I said, there's no power at this yard space. When I'm all done, I basically just throw the wheels back under it and pull this thing back out of there. All right, so the way this thing works is as you saw earlier, that threaded, threaded ball is threaded up 
into this collar. And basically, when you have a drop hitch like this, that's why you use this spacer. So basically this spacer sits here and then there's a little puzzle piece key. And that was part of the reason why I wanted to put the box uh, on this thing because I don't wanna like have to worry about losing this. So this, if you don't have a drop hitch, like this is a drop. So if I were to tighten this, it wouldn't tighten all the way flush. So you pull that out and now it goes nice and flush. And then basically this ball just basically gets threaded up into this. So the idea with this is that you're creating a solid point of contact um, at the coupler versus having that ball and socket be able to move around. So when this is all tight with the shim, it's making it basically so that the power caster can't really pivot. And that's how you're really able to move these things safely and keep them from kind of like popping out on you. Now I was gonna make one of these, but for the money it costs to buy one uh, and the time, it just wasn't worth it. All right, so this is pretty easily moving this trailer, even on this kind of terrible ground. Um, I keep digging in, that's just because there's a fair bit of tongue weight, probably five, 600 pounds. But what's nice is that the cord is just long enough to get to this. I don't have to wheel this thing around with me and it can just sit on the trailer. Um, this is the second time we tried to move a trailer with this. The first time we tried to move my camper and the tongue weight was so heavy that it immediately just dug into the ground because the camper has been sitting for like almost two years. So I think the drums might've been a little bit locked up and this just didn't have the torque to kind of pull it out. Either way, um, being able to manipulate this trailer and much heavier and larger trailers with this in such a slow and controlled way is gonna be huge for us. And having the Anchor Solix 2000, the battery pack to run it off of, so I don't have to run a big extension cord is gonna be awesome. Um, this thing is gonna have a ton of uses even outside of this, but uh, this is gonna be a great use for it, especially when we're using the power caster. So super excited to have this thing in the rotation and working and have this thing as well. So check some links down in the below to check out the Anchor uh, solar generator, the electric generator down in the description. I'm gonna be getting some clips pulling a much heavier trailer with this once a Mac gets the dump trailer off the job it's on and those I'll be sharing over on my Instagram right here at make everything chop so check that out I'm happy to be back in the shop after just uh, having my first child my daughter was born about five weeks before this video is going to be released uh, so it's been a little bit of a break but we're back doing projects she's doing great my wife's doing great and I'm excited to be working on stuff for the fall so thanks for watching and uh, see you on the next video